subject. Now, throughout your exam, did you then um, perform an examination of Amy's back? I did. I'm showing you uh, People's Exhibit, I'm sorry, State's Exhibit number 58. What is this a photograph of? So this is a photograph mostly of the right side of her back and the right side of her chest. Her right arm is in that top right portion of the picture. And here we see multiple sharp force injuries that I identified at autopsy. And here, Dr. Cruz, how many blood, or I'm sorry, sharp force injuries do you see? We see a total of six, which was the number that I, I identified at autopsy. And just so we're clear, there's one right on, um, underneath, or on the picture on the right side, a small uh, one underneath that appears to be arm. Yeah, under, in, under the armpit area, she had one. Doctor, I'm going to show you uh, State's Exhibit number 59. What is this a photograph of? So this is another photograph of the right side of her chest. Now in the rightmost portion of the picture, that's a chest tube. An incision was created and a tube was inserted during emergency therapy. And that's to get any sort of blood out that's potentially in her chest cavity. So that's not considered a wound. But right to the left of it is a sharp force injury. And then would it be fair to say that you, the, the one you just uh, described, mm -hmm. you go to the left of that and you see a second one? I do. So the first one, um, the first one on the right entered the chest cavity through the ribs, and that's the one that also exited the chest cavity on the anterior surface and punctured the right breast and breast implant. Then if you go more to the left, above the M on the ruler is a second sharp force injury. In my report, just for the purpose of organization, I gave, made them A, B, C, and D. So the first one on the very right, I called puncture wound A. Then on the left, more left to it, is puncture wound B. So puncture wound B entered the soft tissue and the chest cavity in between the ribs as well. This one hit the right lung in two different spots. Then it continued on and went through the diaphragm, which is a bit of muscle that separates your chest cavity and your abdominal cavity. It went through the diaphragm and it also punctured the liver as well. Now, so, if you keep going, do you see then what you classified as puncture wound C? I do. So keep going left from puncture wound B are, is C, they're two almost on top of each other. C is on the top and D is on the bottom. Would it be so, fair to see, say that according to the picture, C is a little bit smaller than D? Yes, it does look smaller. And what, um, what observations did you make in your exam of puncture wound C? So puncture wound C injured the soft tissue of the back of the chest, the skin, the subcutaneous tissue or the tissue right under the skin and the muscle of the back, but it did not enter the chest cavity. And if you then go right underneath and a little bit to the left of that, would that be puncture wound D? Yeah, right below it. So you have that long kind of reddish line. That's an abrasion or a scrape. At the bottom of that is puncture wound D. And like puncture wound C, puncture wound D only injured soft tissue. It did not enter the chest cavity. Would, D, would it be fair to say that D then would be the, the lowest puncture wound that we see at this time? Correct. And um, puncture wound E, which one would you describe that being? So at the very top part of the picture, you see a, the la little bottom part of the last puncture wound, not counting that one, the leftmost puncture wound next to C um, is puncture wound E. So puncture wound E did enter the chest cavity, but instead of the right side of the chest, it entered the left side of the chest. It went through the soft tissue in between two ribs on the left side of the chest. It was actually so close to the spine region that it injured part of a vertebral body or that bone that makes up the spine um, and injured a part of that as well before it entered the left side of the chest. Now, doctor, all the way up at, um, of exhibit 59 on the, on the top near the right side, do you see the edge of what you describe as puncture wound F? Yeah, F, F actually was the only one that was on the left side of the back, and F injured the skin, the soft tissue, and it entered the left chest cavity as well. Neither of the ones that entered the left chest cavity injured organs in that cavity, but they did enter the cavity. Now, Doctor, I'm going to show you uh, State's Exhibit number 60. Is this a, a different view of the puncture wounds? This one is, you can't see the one that's underneath her armpit very well, but you can see better the one on the left side of the chest that entered the left chest cavity. So you see five of the total six puncture wounds.
So in this photograph, we don't see what you classified as puncture wound A that's near that chest tube underneath her right arm. Exactly. But you do see the other five. Correct. Now, doctor, based on your exam, could you tell which puncture wound was fatal? So technically, any sort of penetrating wound, like a puncture wound, can be fatal. You can get an infection that can lead to your death that way. In terms of a more rapidly fatal wound, the four puncture wounds that entered her chest cavity were more likely to contribute to her death. So that would be A, B, E, and F. Now, based on your exam, could you tell the direction of the wound paths? So there were two different directions of the six puncture wounds. The rightmost wounds, A, B, C, and D, so the one by her chest tube underneath her armpit, the one left to it, and then the two that are on top of each other, those all go from back to front. So when we describe direction, we do it in terms of anatomic position. So anatomic position is with the person standing straight, looking straight forward with their feet forward. And then their hands are down by their side with their palms out, and so your thumbs are facing out. So with Miss Mullis in that position, those four wounds went back to front, right to left, and downward. The leftmost, E and F, also went back to front, right to left, but they went upward. And what do those different directions indicate to you? To me, they indicate that she would have to be impaled with the rake at least twice. And when you say at least twice, can you tell exactly how many times she was struck? I cannot. You could consider one penetrating wound for each of these injuries, but at least twice, possibly three times. And why do you say possibly three times? So puncture wound D, the bottom most puncture wound, if you think about the corn rake with the tines in succession, the one under her armpit, B and C, tend to be in a line, and those all go in the same direction. That bottom most puncture wound also goes in that direction, but to consider that within the line of the tines on the corn rake is difficult. So to me, it possibly represents a third strike. So, doctor, based on your exam, can you say, can you say that um, Amy Mullis's body was struck at least two times with the corn rake? Correct. Possibly three. 